In today's episode of Connecting Faith and Life, I'm going to share with you an app for people who do not like to read the Bible. I'm also going to share some thoughts from Philippians chapter one and an interview from a student who heard me speak over 12 years ago. Yep, over 12 years ago. In today's episode of Connecting Faith and Life. Welcome to this edition of Connecting Faith and Life. I'm Mr. Brown with Proclaim Ministries, helping you connect faith and life. Thanks for joining us. And just a quick announcement about the podcast. Uh, a few weeks ago, somebody asked me, would the episode be on Spotify? And I had to research and say no, because I did not post it to the right platform. But since then, we now have posted our podcast on every major podcast platform. Um, for that, I'm going to give us a round of applause. Where's my class? clapping sound. That's not it. That's, I don't know where my clapping sound, oh, here it is, clapping sound. There we go. <laughs> uh, and I want to say thank you to all of you who support our ministry. Um, you will make that happen by your uh, monthly, weekly, yearly donations, and I'm grateful for that. And if you haven't joined our support team, please consider joining our support team. Visit ProclaimMinistry.com slash give. In the past, I've said donate, but it's give. ProclaimMinistries.com slash give to donate to our ministry. And listen, every little bit helps. Um, your $10, your $5, your $15, your $50, whatever you can donate, we appreciate. I remember a student at a, a camp had donated $5 a month. She sent me a check, a student, and she said, thank you so much for allowing me to support your ministry. Girl, I'm a, I'm a, I'll am allow you all day to support our ministry because we really appreciate all your donations. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, now, like I said in the opening, we're going to talk about a Bible app for people who do not like to read the Bible or app for people who like the Bible. I'm going to share some thoughts from Philippians chapter one and share an interview from a student that heard me speak over 12 years ago. And that's a great story. And I think I'm going to show just the first part of that, that um, and we'll give you the second part in the next episode. But first of all, this app uh, that I want to share with you, um, um, I use it and I started reusing it more after this conversation I had recently with a guy. I spoke at VC Family Valley, uh, it used to be Valley Christian Family, but now it's called VC Family Church, our church we currently attend. And I got the privilege to speak there. Thank you, Pastor Travis, leadership, let me speak. I was able to present on a Sunday. And it wasn't a typical sermon. It was for the whole family. So we did like a family in the VBS week celebration type of deal. It was fun. You can check that out. We got a, we'll put a link in the description if you want to watch it. We actually broke it up into four parts, I think. So you won't have the whole 50 minutes at one time. You can break it up. But anyway, after I got done speaking, had a lot of conversations with students, with parents. And I had a conversation with an older gentleman who walked up to me. And I can't remember if he said he can't read or he doesn't like to read or he doesn't comprehend much when he read. But in any case, he said he really appreciated the way I spoke because it was practical. And that that's one of the biggest comments you can give me that, that what I say is practical and easily understand. I don't have to give you a whole bunch of big words and not the big words aren't good. I like big words like propitiation and uh, adoption and justification and, and all that. I like those words, right? But I want to make sure, make it practical. And that's what Proclaim Ministry is all about, helping people connect faith and life. So he gave me that compliment. I really appreciate it. And uh, after he's beginning to talk about like the fact that he either, I can't remember, he doesn't read the Bible well because he's not or he couldn't read. I couldn't remember exactly, but I, I think he said he couldn't read. Um, and that's kind of vulnerable to share, right? To share with someone you just heard speak, right? So he shared that. But then I told him about the Bible.is app. And we'll put a link in the description. I did. I will put two links. A link for the app you can download yourself. Also, for a video I did on in the past. This is a great app. It takes the Bible and dramatize it. it. has different versions, English Standard, whatever. But it has a couple versions where it's dramatized. They actually recently have added videos. So you can actually watch some of the Gospels, the video of the book of Mark or the book of Acts or whatever. Um, they have some of that available, but they do for sure have the Bible read to you, audible Bible or audio Bible. But it, it not only does it go verse by verse and it actually in the app, you can read along with it. And I did a, a devotional recently and it'll be posted soon if it hasn't posted already, where we put that on the screen. We can see it reads this part and it's dramatized. They have music, different voices. And so I saw that the gentleman later, uh, a couple weeks later, and I asked him how to go. He said, yeah, it's great, but I did something wrong because it won't stop playing. <laughs> I said, I don't, I don't know his Android phone. I don't, couldn't help him out, but he did something and it wouldn't stop playing, but it played. So he was able to read the Bible or, or listen to the Bible. And then open and I said, people don't like to read the Bible. Well, some, it's not, that you may not like to read. Some of us don't read as easy as others. My wife, she was telling me the other day, she has read 51 books. No, six, is it 51, 41 books in 55 days. That's incredible. Something like that. She told me that she has been reading books like, like, like 
like I watch television shows, <laughs> but she, she's a good reader. Um, I didn't grow up reading that much. I had to, reading was work to me. So I don't read, but I love to comprehend. I love to learn. So the Bible that is has been a great app for me to listen to the Bible while I'm shaving, I'm driving, I'm doing different things because I can comprehend audibly. And we all are wired differently. Some people learn better by listening. Some people learn better by reading, but Hey, this Bible app can give you both because you can read along with the reader and you can hear as well. And I think for me, that's a double whammy because I hear it and I see it. I'm getting it. So check it out. Bible dot is for those of you who either don't like to read Bible, have a hard time comprehending the Bible or really can't read because you haven't learned how to read that well. Check it out. Bible dot is. Is it a great app? All right, let me give you some thoughts from Philippians chapter one. The reason I'm doing this, I am working on, I say it a lot, working on a, a series on Philippians, just breaking it down, just doing a Bible in the book of Philippians. I'm actually doing one in my, I'm just for me and a friend are meeting once a week. We're going through the book of Philippians. Today we read Philippians one verses one through maybe we got to, I think we got to verse 18. Um, so we read through that. And then later in the day, someone asked me, what is one of my life verses? <laughs> what, you know, people say, what's your life verse? I have a lot of favorite verses of life verses, but one of them is found in Philippians chapter one. So I'm going to read really quick Philippians chapter one, verses one through whenever I stop. And I'm going to share some thoughts really quick. And then we're going to get to our interview with uh, the student. So Philippians chapter one, starting at verse one, and I'm reading out of English Standard Version, and it'll be on the screen as I read. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi, with the overseers and the deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all, for you all making my prayer with joy, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Verse 6, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop there, even though I can read forever. But we're going to do a series on that um, and I'll do that later. But this is one of the verses that stuck with me uh, throughout my whole life has been this verse six. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And the reason that verse has kind of stuck out to me, because I, I struggled in my early years of Christianity when not early years of 13, not day I struggled 13, 14, 15 as teenagers, but I struggled even in my twenties after I really kind of understood the Bible more, started reading the Bible more. I struggled with some of my own choices. And if someone, students ask me questions all the time. One of the questions they ask me is what, what's your biggest regrets or some things you struggle with the most. And one of my biggest regrets is that I did stuff that disappointed me or I did stuff that I thought I'd never do. I mean, I'm not going to give you a laundry list of stuff, but man, it's hard to look at myself. It was hard for me to look at myself in the face. And I know God, I've trusted Christ my savior, but yet I'm still doing this stuff that I shouldn't be doing. Man, that just bothered me. And I, I thought my life verse was in Romans chapter seven, the things I do, I don't want to do things. I don't want to do. I find myself doing, you know, what, what's going on with this battle Paul talked about. I can relate with that because I was doing stuff I knew I shouldn't be doing. But this verse was one of those verses that kept coming back to me. And I think the Holy Spirit used this verse in my life to encourage me that God is going to complete the work he started in me. That God is going to finish the work that he started for his glory and for my good. And a, a, a companion verse to this is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, which says this. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Those two verses have helped me in my spiritual journey because when I was failing, when I was faltering, when I wasn't doing the best for myself, God is still faithful to do the work through me and in me because I was faithless, but he wants to get the glory from my life and he will get the glory from my life. He will complete the work he started in my life to his praise and to his glory. And actually for my good, I get the benefit from God working in me. And even those times I fail, make mistakes, God helps me to learn from those mistakes and keep going forward. And so those verses have really helped me in my spiritual journey, especially when I fail myself. You know what I'm saying? Not anybody else doing something to me, but when I, I do stuff to myself. And I remember growing up in church hearing deacons pray and they would pray this sometime. They would say, God, you've been better than me than I've been to myself. That's deep. And it's true. God, you have been better to me then I've been to my own self. And this verse reminds me, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. So I would think of it this way. 
if I had to do a thought of the day, maybe I'll do one on this. I would put it this way. If you ain't dead, God ain't done. <laughs> if you ain't dead, God ain't done. And now it had to encourage me. If I'm not dead, God is not done working. He will complete the work until the day Christ comes back or the day I go home to be with him in glory, that God is going to complete the work he started in me. And I want to encourage you too that, that maybe put your, your name in that verse. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in me, put your name there, in me, he will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. God is faithful. Even when we're faithless, he cannot deny himself. Glory and praise to God alone. That's a great spot for an amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right, last part of this podcast, I want to share with you a conversation, at least part one of a conversation I had with a student from 12 years ago. Now, the video is from recent, and I met him recently, but he stopped me. Uh, I was walking out of a coffee shop. He stopped me and said, hey, Mr. Brown, I got to tell you. And he told me that I changed his life. And I'm like, oh, I perked up when I heard that. <laughs> How? And he began to tell me uh, what happened when I spoke at a school 12 years ago. So I'm gonna share this interview with you. This is part one. And you can also, I put them putting this, this interview on all our podcasts. And just a side note, we have, I do three podcasts currently. We have four, but currently we've been recording episodes of The Mr. Brown Show. You can check that out at hellomrbrown.com. We'll put the link in the description. I also do the, the Choose Well Program podcast, which is coming out this fall. And then the Connecting Faith and Life podcast. I did this interview in each of them because I want everybody to know the story that the, the work God's doing in me He's working through me and in me. And this is one of the testimonies that I get to hear of a student. So again, this is part one. Check it out. Brandon, he was at one point the self-proclaimed undercover bully. Hey, I'm here today talking to Brandon. And uh, I met Brandon. Uh, I met Brandon three times, but I only remember two times because the first time I met him, I was actually speaking. So I didn't meet him. He's he met me speaking. So he came up to me and began to tell me that I changed his life. And that made me, he asked for my autograph. He wanted to worship <laughs> at my feet. No, the second two aren't true. <laughs> I'm just, I was, I was really, last time he met, he came up to me and told me that, that he uh, remembered me from 12 years ago. What grade were you in? I was a sophomore in high school. Sophomore high school. And that was over 12 years ago. Over right? 12 years ago. And that just impressed me that he remembered me. Um, Cause sometime in the work I do, I just, even un honestly doubt the impact sometime. Yeah. But for some, somebody to tell me 12 years ago, they still remember what I talked about, the choose well message and it changed their life. Uh, meant a lot to me. And I wanted to encourage our team as we build team members who are editing videos, help me set up assemblies, um, people who actually donate to help us do what we do. Uh, it's making a difference. So today I welcome, I'm welcome to the show because we're going to put this on the show brandon savania thank you for having me uh this is actually it's really crazy to be here let me be honest with you i well, love that i'm here <laughs> i love that i'm here I'll i mean and i don't and I, i'm not a celebrity you don't know all right but it's the fact that tell tell the audience what you told me as far as how um our assembly or choose a program changed your life yeah uh it was it was 12 years ago um i was 15 and I was going through a lot of things, but the biggest thing for me is I, I felt like I was, there was something wrong with me. I felt like there was something that I, I was that wasn't good enough. Um, there's just a lot of shame in my life at the time that, that like made me feel like I wasn't even worthy to be alive. Um, what, what kind of things were you doing? You felt that shame. What was, you know, the cause of that or what were you doing because of that? Like, you know. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it, a lot of it was just verbal abuse. I was verbally abusive to, to a lot of people without like, without thinking that it was, well, without thinking of the consequences. Um, but I knew that I was being mean. I knew that I was, I wasn't being a nice person. I was, I was essentially, I felt like I was a bully and I did was that I was that way with my friends. I was that way with my siblings. I was that way with almost everyone around me, but people stuck around and I didn't understand why. Um, so that was kind of what happened when, when, when you came up, uh, I I was in a deep space of shame because I didn't feel like I was I was good. Do you think people around you knew that or you just they just thought you were a bad kid? No, I mean honestly, I think I played it really well. I I don't think I I smiled a lot. I I played I played it off like I was I was pretending. Um like I was okay. 
and but in reality there were like there were just factors about me that wasn't good and um i kind of lived my high school life living in that shame before I, before you spoke um because a lot of my bullying years were like before high school and like going into high school i wanted to be this new person but i was living in that shame like readdressing the person that i was like pre-high school you weren't letting yourself be the new you even though you wanted to be a different you you were still trapped in the bad choices you made in the past yeah i mean i like so i mean i made a kid i made a kid eat a banana slug once I I threw a stick at a kid's eye and made sent him to the ER. Like I was a I was a pretty aggressive bully. Um and then growing and then I stopped doing the physical stuff and started just telling people lies about their identity. I started spreading rumors and like these were things that I didn't even like take responsibility of. I just wanted to create chaos. Let me ask you this question cuz in the, in that assembly, I'm yeah. pretty sure if it was a bullying assembly, I mentioned this hurt people hurt people. Wow, yeah. Do you remember that? I, I, I mean, I hear that a lot, but you, were you, I don't doubt that you said that. I, 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 the, during that time, I was saying it a lot when it came to bullies. I wanted the bullies to know that, listen, if you're a hurt person, go get help. Don't keep hurting other people. There's a reason that you're doing these things. Would that, would that be true about you? Was there, did you ever notice or realize what was driving you to do those, those mean things? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You don't have to share right now, but I mean, I'll put yeah, you on spot there. I was you, definitely you hurt, okay. for sure. I was definitely hurt. I was lost and scared, and uh, I wanted to stop feeling, basically. And so you you did, you did hurt other people, and when you did that, did it make you feel better about yourself no. at some point? It didn't. No. Wait, but is that why you were doing it? I did it because I wanted people to feel what I was feeling. Uh, so you wanted people to hurt. I wanted people to hurt because I was hurting. It was like, you don't des if I don't deserve to be okay, you don't deserve to be okay. That was what oh. my mentality was. If I was in a space of shame, nobody else, nobody else should be able to like feel good because I was so bitter about the reality in my head. Wow. And you, so you didn't know that when you were a junior high kid, you didn't, you didn't know at what point did you start articulating that that what was going on? Oh, definitely in high school okay. when I saw that I was, I didn't have any friends. <laughs> <laughs> I had friends, but I didn't have real friends. Okay. You know, like I, I didn't have people who wanted to be around me. Um, and that's where the shame started to build up. It's like, uh, how do I make friends? Why don't people want to be around me? Um, is there something wrong with me? And then you, you started and then you spoke and it came to the point where you came to the point where you said like, it's, it's almost like our choices our choices actually builds the environment around us. I think at uh, that time we've made a lot of we had a lot of one uh, one line. We call them sticky statements back yeah. then, and we still use sticky statements. But the one I was using back then was choices are the puzzle pieces of life. That was one. The other ones you make choices, and your choices make you. Yeah. And so I think that was the that one was the one. Yeah. yeah. So when you heard that, you thought, "Oh, I have, I've been making bad choices." Hmm. That was that was definitely it right there. And I didn't think, I mean, there was a cycle there. There was a pattern that I, I just didn't think I could get out of, right? I didn't think I could get out of these, these pattern of choices that were wrong that made me feel like all this shame. And uh, I don't know what it was. I think, I think it was just the stories um, of like, of the reality that everybody has a story. For me, it was, it was just the fact that I wasn't alone. I mean, a lot of right, a lot of going back to it is like I was hurting people because I wanted people. I didn't. I didn't want to be the only person that was hurting. Mm. And so then, when I realized when 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 it came to the stories, like realizing that everybody has a story like mine, or realizing that somebody is hurting just as much as I am. All right. I now have the uh, agency, the the choice to actually bring people out of it if I can bring myself out of it even the fact that you and i try to get people to understand this too that everybody has a story and everybody's going through something you never know what somebody's going through and i think that's one of the things i say at the beginning of assemblies because i want kids to be able to respect each other not just in assembly but in life but and the reason i think it's so important to respect others you have no idea what somebody else is going through yeah people smile they look good but you have no idea and uh, my experience has been talking to so many students uh, they'll tell me their story looking like there's no way i could have thought you no way i would have ever thought you were going through that mm -hmm. and so i want students to understand and we do it to create empathy for each other you're going through stuff so is the kids you're bullying going through stuff yeah why not make school an environment where we can come and be ourselves yeah and accept it and grow and to yeah. be the people we're going to be one day 
Yeah, exactly. And and uh I mean I was uh I I was living in the shame on my own. Like all these like bullying things that I did were all things that I did in private. You know, nobody knew that side of me unless you were the person being bullied. bullied. And so So you were able to keep it under covers even from your teacher, so they didn't know. Yeah, no, nobody I mean like everybody everybody assumed I was this like just this kid who was full of life, but in reality when I hurt somebody I was I was good. I was better because now I'm not the only one suffering. Wow. Yeah. It was it was and like going back to like nobody knows what I'm going through. You know, I I put on this mask cuz I wanted people to I wanted I wanted to make friends, but also I needed this outlet of hurting. So you were really an undercover bully. In this I sense. was an undercover bully. So the yeah. teachers wouldn't have known that Brandon was a bully. No. But the kids you hurt knew you were bullying. Yes, absolutely. And I picked and I even like the, 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 it was it was so bad because I would I was like a it was manipulative too, you know. I don't even go into how far it was, but it was manipulative, like playing the victim and all that stuff. Um, but I I hated it, absolutely hated it. And it, and then we go into like the choosing well and and like how much we want or how much I wanted to just get out of it, how much I wanted to be a better person, how much that there's just, a, I wanted to believe that there was a better way. And, and it was just as simple as choosing to be better. That's, that's all I got <laughs> out of it. It sounds, it sounds too simple, right? Yeah. But, that's, but I think that's where you start. And I think, yeah. and I, and I, when I speak to students and, and speak in general, I really want students to know I'm not trying to be oversimplistic. I'm not trying to say it's easy either, Yeah. but you got to start somewhere. Yeah. You have to start at some point to start making some different choices. And it's a choice at a time. So in your case, you chose to say, you know what? I don't like what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. I can choose something different. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. And, um, I, I just, I wanted to believe in myself and I wasn't perfect. I learned that, like, I don't know if, I don't know if this is something you spoke about, but I learned, I learned the value of failure too after that. Um, like I'm going to fail at being better and my, my actions aren't like when I do something wrong, there's something wrong with me. My actions are, or, or it's about my character it doesn't have to define you. Yeah. So your 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 bad choices don't define you. That's one thing I really want to help students get over too. Yeah. Things that happen to them or even things they've done themselves, those don't have to define you. They should drive you to a better place. Yeah. They shouldn't define you. Because we all make mistakes. And I, I like to say, don't call them lo- uh, losses, call them lessons. Yeah. Like you're learning from, you're, you're growing from. And that's the power of the idea of choices. Because I can choose to overcome even my worst mistakes. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's the message I want to give students. It's not about, hey, day one, you're going to be from the time you hear my assembly, it's going to be smooth sailing. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. The empowering part is I do get to make choices. Yeah. I get to choose how I respond to what other people do to me. And even sometimes the choice I make on my, on my own, yeah. I can respond to those to be a better person in overcoming those choices. Yeah, so exactly. And, the, and then it becomes an overcoming process and there's more grace in that. And then for me too, like, cause before it would be like, if I did something wrong, um, I would, I would just stay there. Mm-hmm. Right. I would be stuck there, but now it's, I do something wrong and that's just a stepping stone into the next, the next time, the next opportunity that I can make a good choice. Right. And so you're, making, you're making me think of all my sticky statements as you talk now. Stuff, yeah, you, yeah. stuff I wish I'd have had when you were in, you know, you were in <laughs> sophomore, like it's not about perfection, but direction. Yeah. It's not about being perfect. It's not about that, but it's about your direction in life and overcoming those things. Exactly. Um, and then, you know, in your situation, another sticky statement is do the next right thing. Yeah. You know, hey, I made this bad choice. What do I do now? Exactly. I need to acknowledge that I did it, fess up. I messed up. I'm going to fess up. Now I'm going to move on. And so many people, you use the word guilt and shame, the idea that when they mess up, they think we got to hide it because we live in this hyper perfectionism world where we got to put on our best foot for everybody. Everybody's got to mm-hmm. think we're great and we got to perform. Mm-hmm. But the idea is if I mess up, I fess up or I need to do the next right thing, that helps me yeah. to move on because otherwise I'm carrying all of this guilt and shame of stuff I haven't dealt with. If I don't deal with it, it's going to deal with me. And so I think saying, you know what? I did that. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I can't change it, but I'm going to grow from it. My favorite thing too, growing like from that, from that bridge for me, uh, that bridge of realizing that I have, I have the choice to be good. It gave me hope in myself. 
And so it like broke down every barrier of feeling like there was something wrong with me. And that, that moment was like, actually, the only thing that's wrong with me is that I, I'm not believing that I, that I can be. Yeah, you're not believing that you can make a different choice. Exactly. And I think for me, that's why, and I'm not trying to brag, I love this message of choices because even though I did the right things when I was a kid, it wasn't, sometimes was based on my choice. It was yeah. my choice to obey my parents or my grandparents. Yeah. It wasn't me saying, you know what, I can choose my own direction. Yeah. It was like, I was cho- I was taught to obey and I chose to obey because there were consequences I didn't want to deal with. Right. But I think it's more empowering to say, you know what, I can choose I can make my own choices. Mm-hmm. I can even re- choose. I can choose to respond to what my granddad is making me doing. Yeah. I can choose to respond in a good way or bad way, but yeah. I still have that power of choice. I know. And you know, not to quote, not to sound over simplistic, but Dr. Seuss said it, you know, <laughs> I have, you know, Dr. Seuss, you have brain in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself in any direction you choose. That is so true. Yeah. And I think I want to empower people with that because again, I don't know what circumstances you were dealing with that made you so hurt. You might not have been able to stop the hurt from other people. You might not be able to get out of the circumstance you were in, Mm -hmm. but you can choose how you respond to circumstances. Exactly. And you were choosing to take that and you were reacting Mm -hmm. and hurting other people. Yeah. Yeah. And and now it's, it's, it's almost like there is a knowing, knowing what hope looks like, knowing what actions look like, knowing what I have the power of choice. There's almost now a responsibility in my own story to, to give that other people. Right. There's a responsibility now. It was like, there is more authority in the reality that you have agency. If you feel like you're a victim, if you feel like you're, there's something that you've lost. If you feel like there's this thing that's telling you there's something wrong with you, um, there is, there's a better way. And that better way is, is like choosing into better choices. Hello, everybody. Mr. Brown here. Thanks so much for taking time to watch or listen to the Connecting Faith in Life podcast. Let you know Proclaim Ministries is a nonprofit organization and we're crowdfunded, which means we're funded by viewers just like you and listeners as well. Hey, consider joining our support team. Visit ProclaimMinistries.com slash give. Again, that's ProclaimMinistries.com slash give for more information. Again, thanks for stopping by.